by the big red barn in the great green field, there was a pink pig who was learning to squeal. There was a great big horse and a very little horse. And on every barn is a weather vane, of course, a golden flying horse. There was a big pile of hay and a little pile of hay, and that is where the children play. But in this story, the children are away. Only the animals are here today. The sheep and the donkey, the geese and the goats were making funny noises down in their throats. An old scarecrow was leaning on his hoe and a field mouse was born in a field of corn. Cockle-doodle-doo! In the barn there was a rooster and a pigeon too and a big white hen standing on one leg and under the hen was a quiet egg. See, here we go. There was a bantam rooster and a little bantam hen and a big clutch of eggs. Count them, there are ten. Cockle-doodle-doo! Moo! Moo! There was a big brown cow and a little brown cow. There was an old black cat, meow, meow, and a tiger tomcat, yow, yow. There was a big red dog, bow, wow, and some little puppy dogs, all round and warm. And they all lived together in the big red barn. And they played all day in the grass and in the hay. When the sun went down and the great green field, the big cow lowed and the little pig squealed and the horses stomped on the sweet warm hay and the little donkey gave one last bray. The hens were sleeping on their nests. Even the roosters took a rest and the little black bats flew away out of the barn at the end of the day. And there they were all night long, sound asleep. In the big red barn. Only the mice were left to play, rustling and squeaking in the hay, while the moon sailed high in the dark night sky. The end. The next book we'll read is The House in the Meadow by Shutta Crum. And I think we'll read this one for little Michael. The House in the Meadow. Over in the meadow, it was springtime when came a bride and a groom and their best friends ten. And now, said the couple, a house, said the ten. So they planned through the year, and when spring came again, over in the meadow, with a bucket big and fine, shoveled Charlie with a backhoe, and strong diggers nine. Dig, said Charlie. We dig, said the nine. So they dug and dumped dirt with a bucket big and fine. Over in the meadow, beside forms strong and straight, Peter mixed concrete with his messy mace. Pour, said Peter. We pour, said the eight. So they poured the concrete into forms strong and straight. Over in the meadow, big carpenter Kevin sawed up the lumber with his ready team of seven. Build, said Kevin, we build, said the seven. So they built sturdy walls with Carpenter Kevin. Over in the meadow, at the spot marked with sticks, worked Cindy with a rig and muddy driller six. Drill, said Cindy, we drilled, said the six. So they drilled down for water at the spot marked with sticks. Over in the meadow, with shingles by the drive, 
climbed Kelvin to the roof with his good roofer's five. Hammer, said Kelvin. We hammer, said the five. So they hammered on the shingles that were stacked by the drive. Over in the meadow, putting pipes through the floor, Florence used her wrench and apprentices four. Plum, said Florence. We plum, said the four. So they joined all the pipes going through the new floor. Over in the meadow, testing lights carefully, wired John the electrician and his trained crew of three. Connected, said John. Connected, said the three. So they switched on the power in the house carefully. Over in the meadow, in the last room to do, Kelly rolled on paint with her new helpers too. Use blue, said Kelly for the baby, said the two. So they used the blue paint in the last room to do. Over in the meadow, to see if everything was done, came the top town official with inspector number one. Look, said the husband, I'll look, said the one. So he looked and he listed everything was done. There they are moving in. Over in the meadow, by the house in the sun, waved the wife and the husband and their new little one. Home, said the couple. You're home, said everyone. Then they lived in the meadow in their house that was done. The end. The next book we're going to read is Bye Bye Baby by Janet and Alan Albert. And I think we'll read this one for Annika. Bye Bye Baby. There once was a baby who had no mummy. This baby lived in a little house all by himself. He fed himself and bathed himself. He even changed his own diaper. It was very sad. Then one night, when the baby was putting himself to bed, he thought, I am too young to be doing this. I need a mummy. So early the next morning, the baby left his little house bye-bye baby, and set off down the road to find a mommy. The baby could not walk far without resting. He could not walk fast without falling over, but he kept going just the same. After a while, the baby met a cat. This cat was sitting on the wall, washing herself behind her ears. I am a little baby, said the little baby, with no mommy. Will you be my mommy? No. But I will be your cat, said the cat, if you pour me a saucer of milk now and then. Also, I will help you find your mummy. She could pour me some milk, too. So then the baby set off down the road. Bye-bye, baby, with the cat beside him. They had not gone far before they met a teddy. This teddy was sitting under a tree having a picnic. I am a little baby, said the little baby with no mummy. Will you be my mummy? No, but I will be your teddy, said the teddy, if you give me a cuddle once in a while. Also, I will help you find your mummy. She could be my mummy too. So then the baby set off down the road. Bye-bye, baby, with the teddy and the cat beside him. They had not gone far before they met a wind-up hen. This hen was scratching in the dirt at the side of the road and clucking to herself. I am a little baby, said the little baby, with no mummy. Will you be my mummy? Cluck, cluck, said the hen, which meant, no, but I'll be your wind-up hen if you promise not to overwind me. Also, I'll help you find your mummy. A mummy is a hen's best friend, so they say. So then the baby set off down the road. Bye-bye, baby, with the wind-up hen and the teddy and the cat beside him. They had not gone far before they met an old uncle. This old uncle was sitting on a bench reading a book. I am a little baby, said the little baby, with no mommy. Will you be my mommy? No, but I'll be your old uncle, said the old uncle, if you don't wake me up in the night. Also, I will help you find your mommy. Everybody needs his mommy, even me. So then the baby set off down the road. 
Bye bye, baby, with the old uncle and the wind up hen and the teddy bear and the cat beside him. They had not gone far before the trouble started. The baby tripped and fell and bumped his nose. The teddy tripped and fell and bumped his. Both of them fell on the hen. The old uncle tried to help but only stepped on the cat's tail. Worst of all, the sky suddenly grew dark and it began to rain. The baby sat on the ground and also on the hen. I want my mummy, he cried. He wants his mummy, shouted the old uncle. Mummy, shouted the cat and the teddy. Cluck, which meant mummy, shouted the hen. I want my mummy. Just then, around the corner came a lady pushing a baby carriage. Did somebody call, she said. I am a little baby, cried the little baby with no mummy. There's a coincidence, said the lady. I'm a mummy with no little baby. You could be made for each other, said the old uncle. Then the baby said, will you be my mummy? And the mummy said, yes. After that, the new mummy picked up her new baby, wiped the tears from his eyes and gave him a big kiss. With the rain falling faster, she put him in the baby carriage and led the way up the road to her own little house. As they hurried along, the teddy said, will you be my mummy too, over and over and over again. And the cat said, do you have any milk in your house? And the hen said, cluck, which this time just meant cluck. She was still dazed from being sat on. In the house, the mommy gave the baby a warm bath and a dry diaper. The old uncle made a pot of tea. The teddy opened a package of ginger snaps. All of them sat down together in front of the fire. The old uncle sipped his tea and turned the pages of his book. Read us a story, said the baby as he snuggled on his mummy's lap. What sort of story, said the old uncle. A sad one, said the cat. With a happy ending, the mother said. Right, said the old uncle. Then with the firelight flickering in the room and the rain still rattling on the windows, he began to read. There was once a baby who had no daddy. The baby's little eyes grew wide. I am a baby who has no daddy, he said. There's another coincidence, said the cat. The baby clambered down from his mummy's knee and headed for the door. He's off to find a daddy, the teddy said. After that, the baby set off down the road. Bye-bye, baby, with his mummy and the old uncle and the teddy and the cat and the white-up hen beside him. And by and by, the baby met a horse. Will you be my daddy? And by and by, the baby met a rabbit. Will you be my daddy? And by and by, the baby met a daddy. Will you be my daddy? And the daddy said... Yes. The next book we'll read is If You Give a Moose a Muffin by Laura Joff Numeroff. I hope I said that correctly. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to read this one for Leah. If you give a moose a muffin. If you give a moose a muffin, he'll want some jam to go with it. So you'll bring out some of your mother's handmade blackberry jam. When he's finished eating the muffin, he'll want another, and another, and another. When they're all gone, he'll ask you to make more. <gasps> You'll have to go to the store to get some muffin mix. He'll want to go with you. When he opens the door and feels how chilly it is, he'll ask to borrow a sweater. When he puts the sweater on, he'll notice one of the buttons is loose. He'll ask for a needle and thread. He'll start sewing. The button will remind him of the puppets his grandmother used to make. So he'll ask for some old socks. He'll make sock puppets. When they're done, he'll want to put on a puppet show. He'll need cardboard and paints. 
he'll ask you to make some scenery. When the scenery is finished, he'll get behind the couch, but his antlers will stick out, so he'll ask for something to cover them up. You'll bring him a sheet from your bed. When he sees the sheet, he'll remember he wants to be a ghost for Halloween. He'll try it on and shout, Boo! It'll scare him so much, he'll knock over the paints. So he'll use the sheet to clean up the mess. Then he'll ask for some soap to wash it out. He'll probably want to ha hang the sheet up to dry. He'll go outside to put it on the clothesline. When he's out in the yard, he'll see your mother's blackberry bushes. Seeing the blackberries will remind him of her jam. He'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if you give him the jam, he'll want a muffin to go with it. The end. The next one we're going to read is Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type by Doreen Cronin. And we're going to read this one for Sadie. Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type. Farmer Brown has a problem his cows like to type. All day long he hears click clack moo, click clack moo, clickety clack moo. At first he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? Impossible! Click clack moo, click clack moo, clickety clack moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets. No way, said Farmer Brown. No electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we're closed. No milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Click, clee, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. Closed, no milk, no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, a moo. Cows that type, hens on strike. Whoever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. Your cows and hens, I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Duck was a neutral party. So he brought the ultimatum to the cows. There he is. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning. He handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for the duck to come with the typewriter. See, look, everything's all warm. The next morning he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We'd like to a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack. Click, clack, quack. 
clickety clack quack. Kirschblosh. They got the diving board. The next book we'll read is Socrates by Rascal and Gert Bogarts. And I think we'll read this one for Jake. Socrates. Socrates was an orphan. His parents had been snatched up by the dog catcher and taken to the pound, leaving Socrates to live alone on the streets. He dreamed of a home other than his cardboard box. And more than anything else, Socrates dreamed of having a friend. He looked to the other street dogs for company, but they just snarled and growled. They wouldn't share their scraps, and Socrates was left to rummage through garbage cans on his own. It seemed to Socrates he was always alone. Every night he wandered the streets, wagging his tail at passers-by, hoping that one of them would take him home. But the people just looked the other way. Poor thing, some of them would mutter, but they always kept their eyes on the ground. Then one day, as Socrates was scouring the street for something to eat, he found the most curious thing. Sniff, sniff. Socrates examined this new thing. Sniff, sniff. It certainly wasn't something to eat. Sniff, sniff. Socrates discovered the thing fit on his nose perfectly. Perhaps this will help, Socrates thought, and then he went on his way. Socrates stepped inside the flower shop. For the first time, no one chased him away. The florist took a look at him and laughed, a friendly laugh and then gave Socrates a quick pat on the head. Socrates thought the flowers looked brighter than they ever had before. Next, Socrates went to the toy shop. The shop owner smiled and said, here you go, boy. Then he handed Socrates a bit of a sandwich. The toy seemed to be smiling too. Socrates could hardly believe his eyes. All day, Socrates roamed the streets. Everywhere he went, there were smiles, pats on the heads and treats. Extraordinary, thought Socrates as he looked at his reflection. This thing on my nose must be magical. As the day ended, Socrates heard music. Then he turned to the corner and he found the music maker. The musician looked at Socrates. Hey there, friend, he said giving Socrates a pat, and the music musician squinted at Socrates and said, I see you found my glasses, and a good thing too. I can't see a thing without them. If you hadn't come along, I'd never be able to find my way home. The musician laughed, and he stretched his hand out towards Socrates. Socrates pulled back. What, he thought, give back this magical thing? This thing that helped him find food? This thing that had made him so many friends? Then Socrates looked at the musician. He imagined him wandering blindly through the streets looking for his home. He imagined him hungry. Slowly, Socrates stepped forward. The musician took the glasses. Then he gave Socrates a strong pat. Thanks, fella. A good friend like you deserves a special treat. Let's go home and cook up some dinner. And then Socrates knew he had indeed found something magical after all, a friend. The end. Thanks for joining us again. I really enjoyed this. And if you have some stories that you want us to read, at story time from the cabin, let us know. Until then, bye bye. Sending you all our love.
Yours is my special friend, Jack. I love him very much. And he's sad these days because he can't visit his friends the way he used to, and he can't hug them the way he used to. So I said, Jack, what you have to do is just close your eyes and think of your friends and imagine that you're giving them a great big hug and you're laughing and smiling. And then you know something what, what we can do, Jack? Do you know what we can do? We can get one of these things. Ask your mommy or your daddy, what do you got? I have a roll. I have some bubbles. And what we can do is we can send them all our love with bubbles. The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy DC and I am the Thursday night host of St. John's local tradition, Out of the Fog. You know, local matters here on the show and from arts and business, not for profit, anybody doing anything great to make our province a more rewarding place to live and work. It all happens right here in the studio. So join me and my boy DJ Slim Macho every Thursday night for Out of the Fog. What really triggered it was uh, one of my friends uh, who took his own life. I started uh, self-medicating with alcohol. I couldn't sleep. I was having uh, constant nightmares, waking up screaming. Uh, a friend of mine referred me to the Legion. I had no idea what services they provided, but uh, that's what eventually forced me to 